All right, guys, this is a quick review of extra practice if you needed help from the linear demand and supply work that we did yesterday in class. This one, we're looking at the market for chicken in Downingtown, and you can see the demand and supply equations there. If you choose not to graph them right away, as question number one asks, it's a little easier to do, although you could simply plug in numbers, since I tell you what the axis quantities would be, you can plug in numbers and figure out uh, two or three points for each curve and graph it. What I like to do though is figure out first the equal equilibrium price and quantity. To do that, you set the quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied. And if you solve for P in those two equations, you find out the equilibrium price is $5.33. You can take that equation or that number then, 533, and plug it into either the quantity demanded or the quantity supplied equation and get the equilibrium price or quantity. In this case, I put it into the quantity demanded, but it would give you the same number either way. And when you work through that math, using the quantity demanded equation, you come up with 51.67 chickens as your quantity equilibrium in this scenario. So knowing that, um, I went ahead and I let me highlight this up here on this graph. Um, that's going to be approximately right here. Uh, it's not going to highlight real well, so I made that dot extra big. Um, that's going to be one of our two points. And then for question three, you're asked to find the Q-intercept for the demand curve and the P-intercept for the supply curve. Uh, that gives us a second point for each of those curves that we can then graph. So your Q-intercept, if you use the quantity demanded equation, the Q-intercept, you just put the zero in for the price and you solve it and you get 105 chickens where it intersects the demand curve, it intersects the quantity axis. For the P-intercept for the supply curve, you put the zero in for the quantity supplied and you find out where it hits the axis on the, uh, the price axis and you get a negative five. So when you do the supply curve, uh, when you do the supply curve, you're clearly not going to graph down to negative five. And this is one of those odd instances where I told you the supply curve is normally going to intersect the, the vertical axis in a positive territory. Uh, I am not sure where I got this example, but in this case, it intersects in a negative territory, uh, what would be, well, I guess, quadrant two. Um, so negative five as a price intercept doesn't work very well for the supply curve. So I even went ahead then and figured out what the Q intercept would be for the supply curve, um, which it doesn't, again, usually intersect the Q intercept in the positive territory. But in this case, I figured out uh, you could put zero in for the price and figure out it intersects the quantity supplied uh, at the price of zero at the quantity of 25. So I used 25 and then my equilibrium point for the supply curve and drew a straight line. Uh, if you notice, I actually went ahead and, and found another point just to make sure my line was straight. Um, it's a little helpful to do that sometimes. And then for the demand curve, we had the quantity supplied uh, at the price of zero. And we have our equilibrium price and quantity. Um, and then I even, again, I found the, the price intercept because I was just curious and I plotted those and that drew my straight line there. So you should get something that intersects at the equilibrium price and quantity that we noted in, in number two. For question number four, we are now decreasing the demand for chickens in Downingtown by 25 chickens per week. So to do that, you take the original demand equation, quantity demanded equation, and you subtract 25 units of chickens. So you can see I've noted that in red. And for notations purposes, it's also QD1 instead of just QD. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to follow the, the practice of putting those subscripts for, for noting on the curves later. Um, so I have my new curve, my new equation for my curve, and I went ahead and found the p-intercept and the q-intercept because I knew it was going to be easier to graph that way. The question doesn't ask that, but it does make that process easier. So the p-intercept is $8, the q-intercept is 80 chickens. That's fancily good math there. So our new p-intercept, our new q-intercept, and then you can draw a straight line. And you should be able to eyeball at least an equilibrium price and quantity here. But the next step of the equation asks that, or the next step of the, the process here asks that, find the new equilibrium price and quantity given this change. And we are now using QD1 equal to the quantity supplied. And we find a PE1, a new equilibrium price of $3.67, a new equilibrium quantity of 43 uh, and a third chickens. And that should be very close, if you've done your graphing right, to um, $4.33. And what did I say, 41, 33 in chickens? 
um, 43, 33 in chickens. So your intersection should be very close to those to those values. Lastly, what would cause this sort of pop or this sort of change in the demand curve? A decrease in the population of Downingtown. Uh, a decrease in income. Sorry about that. A decrease in income of a chicken would or a normal good. Um, if it's an inferior good, it would have an opposite effect. An increase in demand for substitutes like turkey or beef would then affect the decreasing demand for the substitute good chickens. A decreasing uh, demand of compliments. And barbecue sauce is probably not a great compliment for chicken, but it was the only thing that uh, made some relevant sense to me when I was putting this together. Uh, a decrease in demand of taste and preferences because perhaps people want to avoid chicken because of an avian bird flu scare, uh, an avian flu scare. Uh, as well as lots of other reasons, but I wanted to give you some examples of what that could look like. If you have any questions about the work that was done here, please see me in class or at school, and we can go over it. Thanks.